Have you ever said something and then immediately regretted it? Of course you have. We all have. In this video, I'll show you why that happens and what you can do to avoid it. Hi, I'm Lydia Richards, CEO of Teamworks. We create follow-worthy frontline managers in a 13-hour course. It all starts with self-awareness. This is one of the foundational pieces we teach in this course. I'm going to give you a quick romp through your brain. Whenever any impulse comes into your brain, it comes into this part of your brain first. This is the oldest part of our brain, evolutionarily speaking. Sometimes it's called the reptilian complex because we share it with every reptile on up. I call it the lizard brain. Your lizard brain is there to keep you safe. It can do two things, fight or flight, that's all. So if an impulse comes into your brain and it's life-threatening, you don't even really have to think about it. Your lizard brain's just going to take over and you're going to go into fight or flight. Now let's imagine that an impulse comes into your brain and it's not immediately life-threatening. So it goes by your lizard brain and it goes into your middle brain, your limbic system, also called the mammalian complex because we share it with every other mammal. That part of our brain I call the dog brain. That's where our emotions and our memories lie. If the impulse comes in and the dog brain registers a strong emotion to it, then your dog brain's gonna take over from there. And you're just going to be a wash of emotion, good or bad. Could be joy, but it also could be washing in stress and anxiety, fear, or embarrassment, whatever it is. You're, you're gonna be just feeling at that point. So let's say the impulse comes in it's not life-threatening, so the lizard lets it go. It doesn't create any really strong emotions, so the dog brain's gonna let it pass through. Then it gets up into your prefrontal cortex. La la. This is the uniquely human part of our brain. This is where we have creativity, problem solving. We're able to analyze, plan, envision, dream, predict. And very importantly, this is the part of our brain that has language. So we need this part of our brain to be able to communicate effectively. This is where your great wisdom resides. Because up here you still have access to all of your feelings. You, you can still get access to your lower brain, but you're not lost in it. You know, our lizard brains used to be really, really important for our survival. When we lived among elements and predators, we needed a lizard brain that was always looking for life-threatening dangers. These days, our lizard brains get us into more trouble than they get us out of. Because most of us don't live with that kind of life-threatening situation all the time, but still, our lizard brains are like ready to jump all the time. All it takes is your boss walking by your desk and saying, in my office, right now, and the lizard jumps out, this is gonna kill you. And it's not. And then, the lizard takes over. That's the real problem. Because when the lizard brain takes over, you do not have access to any of the rest of your brain. You can't do anything but fight or flight when that lizard has jumped. Similarly, if you're in the dog brain, all a wash of emotions, uh, stress or anxiety or fear or whatever it is, you don't have access to the rest of your brain. This is why love is blind. When you're just a wash in love, we make some really bad decisions, right? Also, when you're stressed, you make really bad decisions. Like test-taking anxiety is a great example. You, you, you're ready for the test, you walk in, you know what you're doing, anxiety rises, and everything you know just goes kind of out the window. Also, blind with rage. When you're really angry, you can't do anything but be angry. That part of your brain is taken over. And remember, the dog brain, the lizard brain, they have no language, they can't explain themselves. One foundational step in self-awareness is to recognize what part of your brain is leading at any given moment. And the goal is to stay up here in your prefrontal cortex, to keep your mind settled enough that you have access to all this infinite wisdom. And you have access to your feelings too. You just won't get swept away in them. When you say something that you later regret, it's probably because you, oh wise one, didn't say it. It's your lower brain that did the talking and it doesn't do that very well at all. In fact, it also doesn't type very well. If your lower brain, your lizard brain, bangs out an email, don't press send. Developing the ability to watch in real time which part of your brain is taking the lead 
will make you a much better manager and a better parent and a better partner and a better coworker. There's so much to say on this topic. It's part of our program, Evolve for Managers, a 13 hour program, largely about self-awareness. I'd love to share more of it with you. If you'd like to receive more of these tips and tools, subscribe, follow. I'd love to keep up with you so we can take this journey together.